From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. In our top stories this week, ESCOM CEO talks about plans to reduce the power utility's carbon footprint. We look at Danel's strategy for the next five years. And Neil Pretorius, the CEO of DRD Gold, talks about the mining company's turbulent fourth quarter. Jacob Marocha, the chief executive of ESCOM, believes the power utility has no option but to reduce its carbon footprint, not only because of climate change, but also as the cost of carbon is expected to increase significantly in future. Chanel Pringle reports. It is a strategic imperative for state-owned ESCOM as a heavy coal user to look at reducing its carbon footprint, CEO Jacob Marocha emphasizes. I think the biggest opportunity to change that is when we make new investments, they must begin to reflect a lower CO2 emission. Uh, so the big opportunity and the, and the big uh, plan is going to center around what new, te new technologies we bring in. Nuclear is going to be a big issue. Um, hydro in the region is going to be a big issue. Renewables are going to be big. Um, so, so those are the agendas that we or the programs that we must bring in, in, into, into play to make sure that our dependence on coal is reduced and therefore our um, carbon footprint is also reduced. Marocha says renewable energy remains a crucial part of ESCOM's plans to reduce its carbon footprint, despite the utility facing some funding challenges. ESCOM plans to engage with development finance institutions to help fund these projects. What is emerging is that funds for renewables are beginning to, to increase and we want to take advantage of that. <clears throat> but we want to take advantage in an organized way because while you're solving a funding problem, we don't want to add more funding challenges on it. But uh, we, I mean, this does not mean we're not um, committed to renewables, we are. And in, in fact, I mean, it, once we deal with the funding model, we also want to make sure that that funding model integrates our aspirations on renewables in it so that we really can, can, can make a, a huge move in bringing renewables in this country. State-owned defence industrial group Danel has refined its turnaround strategy. More on this from Keith Campbell. Danel developed its turnaround strategy some three years ago. A key element has been the reorganisation of the group into a holding company with a number of subsidiary companies, some of which will remain wholly owned by Danel, while others have been, or will be, turned into joint ventures with strategic, often overseas, equity partners. The group hopes to return to profitability in the 2012-2013 financial year. The Nell Group Executive, Strategy and Commercial, John Morris, outlines some of the priorities for the next five years. Essentially this year we've redefined the strategy. We've taken, taken a very close look at the global financial crisis on defence trends globally, demand patterns, shifts in technology, shifts in market, and we've redefined the strategy to really focus on growth, customers and efficiency. And that's really our core, core, core uh, objectives for, for our strategic drivers. We're still continuing that theme around market access, which is very, very important, growing the revenue line through our equity partnerships, existing partnerships and new partnerships in certain areas, not all of Denal. And then, of course, uh, you know, growing new markets and growing our existing customer base. A big focus on the strategy, the second driver, is operational excellence. Really ensuring that the, that the business is positioned to perform, to perform according to specification, perform according to contract. You know, we, we've managed to ensure that our gross profit margins have increased markedly. The third aspect involves deepening relationship with DOD and our customer base, DOD being our primary uh, customer, and, and deepening that relationship so that we work in partnership going forward around what technologies will need to be developed to support DOD uh, deployed operations. South African gold producer DRD Gold reported lower profit and production in the fourth quarter. Jonathan Faris spoke to CEO Neil Pretorius. 
DRD Gold's poor operating performance in the fourth quarter was characterized by significant seismic activity at the company's Blayfor Eitzacht mine near Coltonville. You know, cash operating profits were obviously affected by the, uh, the strengthening of the RAND. Uh, the, the effect of the RAND in the quarter was about 82 million rand to the bottom line. Uh, if we sold our product for exactly the same price that we sold it for in the last quarter, we would have been just over 83 million rand up. Uh, so that, that was the biggest impact. But of course, we also bought the, the balance of the, the Ergo uh, circuit from Intel's. And that added 18 million rand to operating costs without uh, the benefit of the uh, operational uh, throughput. Uh, this, this circuit will probably only reach steady state by September of this year. And then that's unfortunately something that we had to do. We, uh, it's, it was a deliberate decision to buy it at the time that we did. But of course that added to a total overhead cost. Pretorius adds that the company is hopeful that it can recover from this. Well, I think the, the, the strategy that we've had in place now for several years <laughs> of, of growing our exposure to, to the steady uh, surface operations as a means to support uh, the, the balance of our group during the lean times and also obviously as they become very nice uh, margin assets when, uh, when times are good. Uh, I think that strategy will continue and, and we've got some very clear markers also as to how we want to preserve our cash position and make sure that we don't compromise the two. And now for a sneak preview of this week's Engineering News magazine. Read our cover story on how South Africa wants technology diffusion to be at the centre of any deal reached at December's crucial climate change gathering in Copenhagen. We report on the overall of South Africa's optronics industry with the help of a German company. And Mercedes-Benz plans to introduce a luxury hybrid car into the South African market. And in Mining Weekly this week. Our cover story focuses on ESCOM seeking a new deal with aluminium smelters. Read about a company led by President Jacob Zuma's nephew and Nelson Mandela's grandson bidding for the provisionally liquidated assets of Bamatsu Gold Orkney. And Impala Platinum is bullish on the Palladium Prize due to Russian destocking. That's Screamer that's Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy. Prima Media's engineering news has delivered unmatched insight into the real economy. For breaking news, visit engineeringnews.co.za. The engineering news, not just for engineers.